Mr. Heffern here, and here's a short video on special relativity and kinetic energy. Okay, relativistic kinetic energy is very similar to um, relativistic momentum. It is affected by the mass increase, but it's actually not as straightforward. It's a little bit different. Um, here you can see the how momentum is affected. Here's the momentum formula. Uh, your momentum is your mass times your velocity. And in relativity, you just have to add in the gamma factor, where um, m is your rest mass, and the gamma factor takes into consideration the mass increase. Now, unfortunately, it's not just the same thing for uh, energy. It's a little more complicated. You have to use Einstein's most famous equation, E equals mc squared. So this is how much nuclear energy an object has. Uh, it's total energy when it's at rest. So you take the rest mass times the speed of light squared. Uh, when you're moving, though, you have a mass increase and your total energy increases. And so um, what you do is replace the, the mass, the rest mass, with, uh, or sorry, the relativistic mass with your gamma m naught, and you get this equation. So this is your total, total energy. But because you, you gained energy thanks to kinetic energy or motion, uh, to find out your kinetic energy, it's just take a look at your total energy now, E, your rest energy, E naught, and add the kinetic energy, rearrange this equation, and you get this formula right here. Your kinetic energy is gamma, subtract 1, times your rest energy, m naught c squared. And uh, if you like to see it with the gamma factor plugged right in, it looks like this, this nice big equation right here. Okay, if you want to see where this derivation comes from, it does require a little bit of calculus. So this is pulled out of a survey textbook from the university. Um, the work is equal to the uh, integral of the uh, force uh, dx. Uh, and then you have to include the uh, Newton's second law, which is uh, um, the change of momentum with respect to time. You plug it all in. If you go through the derivation, you'll see, you'll see the, uh, you end up getting the same formula. If you're in high school, though, you're probably not using integrals yet, so uh, just skip this part. All right. All right, so example one. A spaceship has a rest mass of 10 tons. It accelerates to 0.9c. If the engines are 100% efficient, and it uses hydrazine, which is rocket fuel, uh, which provides 19 and a half megajoules per kilo, and how much fuel would it need to burn? So I looked up um, hydrazine on the internet and Wikipedia, and the energy intensity is 19 and a half megajoules per kilo. So here we got our formula for kinetic energy, um, and we want to accelerate up to 90% the speed of light, so we're going to plug in 0 0.90 into our gamma factor. And we end up that um, if you reach 95% the speed of light, oops, 90% the speed of light, you're going to get uh, 2.065 times 10 to the 21 joules. That's a lot of joules. Now, if you take that energy and divide by the joules per kilo, you find something crazy here. Um, it takes 1.06 times 10 to the 14 kilos. That's 106 trillion kilograms of fuel. And if you divide by 1,000, that's 1 1.06 times 10 to the 11 tons. But wow, if you divide by the mass of the spaceship, which is 10 tons, that means your, um, your rocket, your fuel, is 1.06 times 10 to the 10. That's 10.6 billion times more massive than your spaceship. So you can see why we don't, we don't travel near the speed of light in our ships today with our current technology. We just can't bring that much fuel with us. So um, another alternative unit to joules when talking about uh, special relativity and kinetic energy is the electron volt. Uh, because uh, this is the unit that you like to use when they do particle physics. So what is an electron volt? Well, first of all, take a look at the, uh, what, a, um, uh, what an electron charge is. One elementary charge is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And if you stick one elementary charge, like an electron or a proton, between some parallel plates with one volt of potential difference, you will gain the same number in joules of kinetic energy. So that's basically one electron volt. Let's just take the elementary charge, uh, multiply it by one volt, and you get the joules. So Now the, uh, the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, which was used to find the Higgs boson, or the God particles they like to call it, uses 13 tera electron volts. So basically after going around the circle many times, it accumulates up to 13 trillion volts worth of potential difference, and the protons get 13 tera electron volts worth of kinetic energy. 
So now here's the mass, rest mass of a, of a proton, 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. How fast did they end up in the accelerator? This kind of gives you an idea. So the proton comes in, accelerates, 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 and gets really fast. Okay, so uh, here's the kinetic energy formula again. But uh, this time we're actually looking for the speed, so we have to rearrange this equation for the speed. So I plug in the gamma factor, and we're going to isolate for V now. Uh, so what I do is I take m naught c squared, divide it to the other side, and then I square both sides to get rid of the square root. So now I'm going to have a k squared over m naught c squared squared. Right? But I remember, m naught c squared really is just the rest energy, e naught. So I'll just put that in so it's less writing. Um, and so what do we get? We get uh, the kinetic energy squared divided by the rest energy squared is equal to 1 over the uh, 1 subtract v squared over c squared. So all we have to do now is just cross multiply this bracket up to where the k squared was, bring the k squared down, bring the e naught squared up to where the 1 is, and we get this equation right here. And now all we have to do is take this negative v squared over c squared over to the other side, bring the e naught squared over k squared over to this side, and we get this, and then multiply the c squared over to the other side there, and then square root both sides, and boom, we get this nice little equation right here. So this would be the speed of our um, of our proton in the particle accelerator. Just take the rest energy, divide by the kinetic energy, subtract that from one, and multiply by the speed of light. So it might be nice to know the rest energy of a proton then. So it's easier to find that on the side here. So we take the mass, 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms, multiply by the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second squared, divided by the number of uh, joules per electron volt, and we get this number, 939,375,000 electron volts. Now I think when I looked it up, it actually said it was 938 mega electron volts. So we're off by just one little digit here. It's probably because uh, we're using rounded values. So uh, we're just going to plug that into our speed, our speed formula that we just derived earlier. And we get um, the rest energy divided by the 13 tera electron volts, kinetic energy that we're going to accumulate. And we get this nice little number, 0.999963869C. So that's 99.9963869% speed of light. Now, if you look it up online, it says uh, it was 99.9999990 percent the speed of light. So we're off just a little bit, almost the same as here. Uh, if you calculate the percentage error, we're off by negative 0.004 percent, which means we're 99.996 percent correct. Pretty good. I'll take that. Here's another useful equation. If you want to see uh, how this equation is derived, it's a little complicated and a little long for our uh, video here. I have provided a link for, from AK Lectures. You click on this link and you can watch this derivation. But this is a nice little equation that relates relativistic energy to relativistic momentum and rest energy right here. So we'll just make use of this one. Uh, so here's an electron with a rest energy of 512 kilo electron volts. You can look that up if you like. During a particle physics experiment, it's determined to have a momentum of 1.57 times 10 to the negative 22 kilograms meters per second. So find its total energy, and then find its relativistic kinetic energy. So we're going to use this new uh, little equation, which relates energy and momentum. But sometimes you don't know the mass of an object, and sometimes you don't know exactly the speed, but you do know its momentum from uh, how it interacted with the momentum detector. So here we go. Uh, we just plug in the momentum. Uh, C is 3 times 10 to the 8, so I just left it as a C. We have the 512 um, kilo electron volts, a little typo on this in the K there. And we get this uh, much energy for its uh, relativistic energy right here. Okay, sorry about that. I fixed the typo here. So we're going to end up getting uh, 590,593 electron volts, or 590.593 kilo electron volts, which we're plugging over here. Um, so when you do the kinetic energy, it's going to be your total energy. Subtract the rest energy. And so we had a kinetic energy of 78.6 kilo electron volts, so which is uh, which is quite a bit. No, it's actually a fraction of its uh, of its energy. So it's about um, let's see, a fraction of its rest energy. There we go. Okay. All right. 
So moving on to the last slide here. Uh, so at relativistic velocities, our old kinetic energy formula just doesn't cut it. Can't use k equals mv squared over 2 or 1 half mv squared anymore. We have to make use of Einstein's most famous equation, e equals mc squared. And with some algebraic manipulation, we can derive some other useful equations like the e squared equals p squared c squared plus rest energy squared. And don't forget the useful unit, the uh, electron volt, a very useful unit. All right, and I hope this helps. Thank you.